me, me rather they would want broke man when I have nothing at all to give me than they would a rich man when I give me nothing. You're crazy. You're mad. Me rather fight the fight with one hustler with somebody who I know say I try. So I know say if you can get 10 grand in give me one five or one eight or one seven. Depends on how you feel. Then they would want a rich man and he not give me nothing just to drive in a oofa car. They say, oh, me there with who and who for son. Crazy. Yes, the title, you're crazy. <laughs> you're mad. In a 2023, no boy can rape me. Uh, no boy can rape this girl here. I swear to God. Uh, for you can rape. I mean, I mean, mean no boy rape me. Uh, time too hard. Me have to work too hard. You know much night. I want to go to my yard and can't go out here. Can I stop on people's fingernails? Eh? And then me, if I must make a boy come sleep with me, if no up. Just to say, oh, me there with so and so son. Free service. Eh? You're crazy. <laughs> I hope you drive in a boy, Ben. I hope you drive in a boy, Prada. You're crazy, man. You're mad. Welcome back to the boss, guys. And you hear that? To each his own. That's her opinion. That's her life. That's what she shows. But they post a video with the man I talk about some things they don't like. And the woman them rub him in a comment. And this video should show that people are very uh, one-sided. You understand? Because I know a lot of women are going to agree with what the lady they say. But with what the man say, and come out and talk truth, um, most men agree with him, but the majority of women not agree with him. Check out the video, guys. If you're not interested, just click down and look for man talk truth about relationship. Anyway, I come to highlight the story here. It happened Saturday night, and I feel like I need to, sh to preview it back in a video context like this so people can understand that no matter the challenges no matter the obstacle you can make it this lady is not just any other lady this is my family she is my little sister and i've been telling her a long time so come and share your story and your story is so inspiring and it can be a role model to other females who are going through stuff like this i'm not going to talk much I'm going to listen to the conversation. All right? Like it and comment. Share my journey and hope that what I've been through, it will be able to motivate other young ladies up there and possibly even young men who might have gone through the same thing that I have or is going through it right now as we speak. Right. So um, let me start off by saying that at the age of 21. Well, at the age of 18, I met this man. I think I knew him sometime before 18, but I can't remember that we started out the relationship at 18. So by 21, we decided that we'd get married. Um, there were times when I had second thoughts, but you know, my challenge is I grew up in a home with a stepfather, and it's not like I wasn't shown love. However, I had that void of not having a father, you know, my blood father in the home with me. So it was like, you know, a man come, they tell her that they love you, and because you're missing out on manly love, you take it for granted that this is love. Right. And... Uh, you don't even, and I guess I was too young to even think about what is real love from what is not real love. And now, since I've gotten older, I have learned that before we jump in any relationship, let us sit back and observe. Don't be too quick to say stuff. Mm -hmm. Observe, see how that person treats you, see how the family treats you. And you know can make a decision if you are willing to go into that type of situation. Right. So I got married at 21, had my daughter at 22. Seemingly things were going okay. Shortly after we got married, um, he was overseas, so I used to travel back and forth a lot. So when I was pregnant with my daughter, he planned a surprise baby shower for me. And would you believe that at the baby shower, this man had the audacity to invite his girlfriend to the baby shower. 
And as fate would have it, you know, funny enough. You know, hold on, hold on. She sat on hold on. Let me intervene, Liko. Hold on. While he was pregnant, he, he, he threw a baby shower for you, right? And while he threw a baby yeah. shower for you, he find out, you, uh, you find out, say, he invite one girl, he did involve with one girl. Mm hmm. Wow. So, how you find out, say, hold on. How you find out, say, of the girl? You did a rear bit, how you find out? I, you know, funny enough, I found out that it was his girlfriend long after I had the baby. Oh, oh, like oh okay, all right, baby. okay. Me get what you ask now. So the girl did come at the yeah. baby shower, but after the baby born, everything, our process, how long after you find out, say she was his girlfriend when bring at the baby shower. Yeah. Wow, what a devil, man. Go and talk. <laughs> Let me hear what's going on. And I said, look at that. Well, it's at the baby shower. It's, we have two plastic chairs um, bound together, and the girl sat on the chair. And funny enough, the two chairs them just break apart with her. So from that night, you know, I had this thinking, how oh, comes the chair burst with that girl there? Wow. And that is how I started to ask questions. Who was that girl with the chair burst with? Uh, and everybody, you know, wow. never wants to say anything. Until, as I said, I don't have to have the babies. A family member told me that. It was his girlfriend. So when he was away, shortly after we got married, mm -hmm. and he went back overseas, the girl moved in with him. So, so uh, well, on, where the, well, on, where the girl move in? Where, while your, your girl, did they are foreign or out here? More understand, good. Repeat. Which part the girl moved in with him while he was overseas? Oh, or overseas, oh, while she was overseas and I was here in Jamaica. Jamaica, okay. So she moved in with him afar yeah. and they lived together and you were uh -huh. in Jamaica and nurse your baby as a married woman, yeah, as man. a wife. All as right. a married woman. All right. All right. And right. then, Continue you know, there. when you realize, say, uh, you're married and mama's boy. Again, uh, that's uh, the next problem. Oh, mama's boy. And everything. Jesus yeah, God. man. Ooh. Everything the mother have an input. Red flag. Everything she she want dictate how they supposed to go. And Red when flag. you decide, say, oh, they're not gonna live by her standards. All of a sudden, is a problem. Mm-hmm. True. True. In most relationships. You know. Yeah. In most relationships. Like, once your mother, uh -huh. once you have the mother-in-law involved in our relationship and she addicted to you do, you know, going to have a big problem. You say if you're not side with the mother, once you say a mama's boy, Jesus God in heaven, uh -huh. a problem that. Enough man in a relationship and the mother addicted to them how to deal with the wife and where the wife fit do, and where the wife not fit do. I strongly believe that mother or father not have no influence in enough people marriage. That is my strong belief. Mm-hmm. You understand? But go on with the story. Cause you talk some point where I see some red flag as as you talk, I see them. <laughs> so I just lay them out. Yeah, man. Listen, and you know, for all the ladies them who are on the live tonight, mm -hmm. I can set to you without a doubt. You see, any time you decide to start a relationship, or any situation, whatever it might be. Mm -hmm. And you see, once your intuition tells you certain things, listen. Sometimes they might say, oh, we are overthinkers, and with this or with that, follow your mind. Because 99 out of 100 times, your intuitions, they are correct. Mm -hmm. Let me give you another instance of how <laughs> sometimes you take up some people, you not even know where you take up in your life to write it. Mm -hmm. So, you know, sometimes when you tell her, like, I can remember a time when my intuition was just telling me that something is wrong. So I was home, he was at his house, and like this person said, my son come. So I said, time I run off, time I run off, and him can't come. And uh, one man I said, no man, go down at the house. Then the next man, I said, no, sir, just wait. Him say, him's phone come. But you know, we as women, I go follow the other man. We say, go. So I go down at the house. You know, I said, I go down at the house. The car did the pop up. And uh, 
me go around because with the other uh, yard where me go, mm -hmm. me go around at the window, my four room window, me hear voices in my room at all. Would you believe, say, at the boy and girl in the house, the two of them naked? Jesus God in heaven, your husband, <laughs> well, and you go, you go back to your house where your husband live because you are in it for meet up with you right. and when you go you go to your window right. and you hear voices and when you peep you see him naked uh -huh. man, Jesus. and you did that wait for him Emmanuel, Emmanuel. yeah Jesus God Emmanuel, Emmanuel. but all of that trust me if I sit down and talk some things that I go through because you know you're something you go through some things and you just are trying not to relive it. Mm -hmm. And then the worst thing about it is see after we got separated, mm -hmm. the family basically tried to turn my daughter against me. They wow. said I was the problem why the marriage broke up. And uh, because of me, why things don't work out and the mother tell her say, Oh, them try to work it out. She not tell her all of the nights them, the sleepless nights them. When me used to lay down in a bed by myself and when him come at Jamaica, him gone out with him friend from morning to night, the granny not tell her none of them something there, mm -hmm. but I'm me the bad person. Mm -hmm. We decide say me no want my daughter. Mm -hmm. A mama's boy, you know. Me no want Yeah. Me no want dead left my picnic, so I decide for less. Take me back but, to one part in a day, well on. Take me back to one part where you say, um, him come back to Jamaica, come here did attack. You say, him come back to Jamaica and he start on taxi. And while you was going, I don't know if I work, you say, or something, and you him pick her up in a car. <laughs> How the part did he go? I remember more than me. Oh, that time when he picked me up in a car and he girl in like front and he put me on her back to show you how young and fool and in love. So, <laughs> then time they are how much? <laughs> yeah, but I remember. When you hear that, guys, Bruce, our man, run, our husband, I run taxi, and he pick up. <laughs> uh, who, who first him pick up? I I skip him and him pick up first. He pick up, he keep him on first. Yeah, yeah, but I uh, yeah, the wives, I uh, yeah, did have a ring. So, <laughs> <laughs> well, so maybe he was a keep him on. No, when I look back on some things, no, you have to laugh and about. In a them time, the right, whole heap hurt. I know how if I hurt you, I got you, mm -hmm. and you know, it's good when you can't talk about it now with a smiling face. Yeah. So, a man, pick you up, a man, I run taxis, he, he pick up, him keep him on, right, he pick up, him wife, I front, hear me, I don't follow you, he pick up, him keep him on, at the front, him on front, and pick you up, and put you at the back. So, how uh -huh. you find out that the woman there was him, keep him on, how you know? All right. So I like a toxic trait when I found a woman and I'm afraid to target. And I can say this. I, that, that was my toxic trait mm -hmm. where I would search his phone. And sometimes you'd have see some face. And when you see the person out in a public, you say, right, it, but other girl in the day, they tell this and I tell that. Oh. So oh. I search, well, I'm mean, not going to do my child, my best not to do them things there again. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Yeah. Wow. Jesus. Yeah, so what in the relationship does it ever get does it does it ever get abusive? Like like you know get uh, in yes. you know, get in an altercation where um it reached there so I never really reached like that. Alright, so I'm gonna tell you the breaking point for me was when there I remember I think it was in twenty ten. Mm-hmm. 2010 or 2009 December, but I remember clearly it was a December, and we I got up and um he went on the road like literally from in the morning, mm -hmm. and he came back in the night like probably like no after eight them time, mm -hmm. and his first question to me was where you cook, so I said anyway I did that the whole day because bear in mind says for the entire day I call I call I call and I never get him no time throughout the day right. And you come now and come ask me, what were my cooks? So I said to him, wherever you're coming from, you should have eat from there, so I don't feel bad I'm about no food. True. And it just me saying those things to him, because mm -hmm. I was, you know, probably hitting a button that he never liked. Mm -hmm. In a 
split second, it turned physical mm -hmm. to the point where I'll always remember he went outside in the yard and he took up a piece of iron pipe mm -hmm. and he came back inside the house with it. And it was, if it wasn't for his brother who was there to part us, Whoa. I wouldn't be here today because that's the anger that he had towards me because I pointed out that he was out all day with his girl. He got so angry. And that was the first time and probably the last time I was slapped in the face by him. Mm -hmm. And that was the night when I made the decision to leave. Okay. When I was leaving, the only thing that would be in mind, this is a man that I spent years with. Everything that I had was at this house. And I made the decision that night to leave with my daughter. I always laugh when I talk about it. I had. I had one of those red clothes baskets. I don't know if they're still out there with the, the, the holes in it. Mm -hmm. I left with that. And I had a traveling bag and a suitcase. So I left with those four things. My daughter, the traveling bag, the suitcase, and my clothes basket. Mm -hmm. And he was so upset when I, when I said I was leaving that. When I had my stuff at the gate, he came out there and he kicked over my clothes basket and I had to walk around and pick it up and everybody in this scheme came out and look up there. And that was like the most humiliating day, night of my life. And I made the decision to leave and I never went back. Mm -hmm. However, you know, my situation at the time sound bad. Mm -hmm. However, I am where I am today. Today, is well this year is what 17. 13 years yeah 13 years since i left and i never go back and because of the struggles i had to go through when i decided to leave him the support the financial support was non-existent my daughter was going to um kindergarten at the time mm -hmm. And there was no financial support. I reached a point in life where I was so low that I had to go back to my mother's house. Right. I wasn't working because this man was my sole provider. And there's another learning curve again, that for us ladies, a lot of times we stay in relationships that are so abusive because for one, this person is our sole provider. True. And you would think that if we leave, we won't survive. And even though at the time when I left, I didn't know how I was going to survive. When I went back to my mother's house, the bed that I used to sleep on as a child, that is the bed I had to go back on with my daughter now. Basically starting from scratch. It reached a point where when I couldn't make it out, I had to basically borrow money. And I, I always remember Crazy Jim ice cream that is in Spanish town. And I went there and I bought two boxes of ice cream, mm -hmm. one Neapolitan, and I think the other one was like Roman raisin or grape nut, something like that, mm -hmm. and a box of corn. Mm -hmm. And that is what I sold to buy snacks for my daughter to go to school mm -hmm. and to basically keep us afloat mm -hmm. until I decided that I would go and do NYS. Mm -hmm. And you know, after NYS, I worked there for some time until I realized that this money that I am getting from NYS, it is not enough. Mm -hmm. I always wanted to be a flight attendant, but you know, now I have my daughter, I'm thinking that I don't want to leave her. My second choice is that I always wanted to be a police officer. And I tried the first time and I didn't get through. And when I think I was at rock bottom, I went back to Ocean Boulevard. Right. And I did the police test. And I passed, I went in, I did my basic training, I graduated. Mm -hmm. 
was sent to a specialized section, which on another another day, Damon, we can talk about that. But, right. And just to give you guys a brief, I work with children who are abused, or persons who are victims of sexual offenses and child abuse. Right, Sissoka. And I can proudly say, Sissoka, mm -hmm. I can proudly say that because of what I went through with my ex-husband now, mm -hmm. it gave me the determination to push harder in life. Because mm -hmm. now it's not just me that I was living for. I, w I had my daughter. Right. And I, would, I don't want to say I want to give him credit, but because of what he did to me, I found the strength to push forward. Right. And, so you true. know, with the help of God and having faith, yeah. things will get better. So, ladies and But right now, right now, right now, sis, right now, you have your own house, you have your own car, mm. you're just turn sergeant. You're not telling people the good news. <laughs> they get cheese stripe now. Right. She get her cheese stripe. <laughs> she get cheese stripe now with all her struggles. See, she overcome that. I understand? When we look at there, as she and Prime Minister talk, and as she can, and she show Prime Minister <laughs> how things use and something, then she get three stripes now, and she have a nice big house, and she have a car now. So, you know, this is a perfect example. You sometimes, you depend on a man for so long as a breadwinner, and you tell yourself, so you can't make it without him. You is a perfect example. You, you, you hear when you say you start with two boxes of ice cream, and then you realize that the money is not enough and you realize your dream. You go back to your giant board and say, wait, I did want to become a flight attendant or a police. And you make the first step of doing the police test and you fail. And you never give up and you still went back again and you pass it. And that was a little breaking point. And see, you know, mm -hmm. yeah. And you know, them things come like is a book, my friend. Them things come like a book. And I think when I tell you, tell me, say, the... the it, the guy end up when doing in get pitney while they did married with him, he did get pitney in the relationship, right? I think so because he still denied, but he I don't still think denied. He care. Yeah, he <laughs> ain't care right now. So, question Does this husband ever come back to you and say, Would I want to try? Like when you see a success now, I go on and thing and say, Your life has tried me, ever come back? Listen, you would right now. You see, because, of, you know, it's a man at work and whatever. Yeah. One time, sometime last year, I remember I said to him, but I'm not going to tell you one thing. Mm -hmm. One thing him do, me and him split the data, lunch money for school. School, so, right. So, mm -hmm. fine. Mm -hmm. That is it. Lunch money, full mm -hmm. stop. Mm -hmm. Last year, when I said to him, I need some extra money to do stuff for the child, his words to me is that, you don't have your house already, and my house me want have no. <laughs> and from that, him, him don't talk to me. <laughs> Bad man is active. <laughs> <laughs> you don't have your house. Yes, so, so you see, you come out, end up better than him now. With all of the foreign mm -hmm. women go and the whole of woman where he muggle with, where he have show now. Nothing. Mm -hmm. And you come own a big, nice house, and you take time to your thing, said we, as a single woman said we. You see me? So this is a perfect example. Some people say, oh, I can't make it without Damien because Damien is my breadwinner. What are we going to do now? You see me? Always aim. That is why I talk about a mostly woman over here. I would deal with woman empowerment. Woman for just motivated and know. So yeah, at this moment, I can't beat. You understand? So make this be a perfect mm -hmm. message for any woman. We have no man to abuse them or then say they can't leave them because this or that. Walk away. Because you see the night there, if a man never, if a brother never did that, no. If the brother never did, if he take with the iron down, whatever, no. who to tell? You know, must they have to talk now. Mm -hmm. You understand? Because they say the anger that, the anger that we ain't come out with. And you say when you take out your basket with the little clothes of your daughter and kick you over. Mm -hmm. So, you know, me know you forgive him, but you won't forget. Never, but it's, as I say, it's, it's a learning experience curve. Mm -hmm. And uh, as I said to women out there, there is absolutely nothing in life that you see that you cannot get 
if you have shared determination and know that you want to get out of the situation, right. yes, the initial time when you get out of it, it might be hard. But you see, once you keep your faith on God, right. trust me, God not fear your no deal. True. You know, if you take up no phone and call no friend and make friend decipher anything for you, you just need to pray to God. I mean, I tell you, Mm -hmm. God, no, make your enemy then triumph over you. Never. Not true. You no, make your enemy then triumph over you. That is true. That is also my testimony. Mm -hmm. People who despise me and try to hold me back, I try to do everything to tear me down. When I look back, them they way behind the line. I'm just a prosper, so I climb mm -hmm. up the ladder, I go up. I saw me just up in the air like one angel. Just a float, so I go up, left them, and I look down yeah. upon them. So. Yeah, man. It's a real thing, man. Prayer move mountain and determination. And hard work be off. You understand? And I must say, as a guys, this is my sister. Yeah, how much you all are? How much you all are than you? Me? Yeah, man, me are 38. You are 38, and me are 41, so I'm a 3 year older than you. Right? So, yeah, me are your big brother. So, as me are 30, as a little sister, <laughs> <laughs> I am so super proud of you. I know the journey, and a long time, I always tell you, listen, you need to talk about your, your, your journey and your story. You understand? Because you overcome a lot of obstacles. And, you know, which part you there? I know you have places to go higher said way, but you don't know I'm proud of you. You see me? Uh -huh. You hold up your head and I'm proud of you. And, yeah, man. I'm glad. So, and I love the, the, the part where you take on. This is soccer part. We start by the soccer, sir. And we have a representative who is just going to come over here. So yeah guys, and the eighth one are with hard work and determination, she, she make it. She have a house, she have her own business, and she is a Sarge and she is a Sissoka. Big up on yourself, to God be the glory. Ladies, no make no man take no liberty you know, walk out. But sometimes when you say it hard, if you walk away, God things not gonna get better. You never can tell. I'm out.